foliar feeding has become incredibly popular on a lot of different crops. But what we wanted to really talk about today is not just foliar feeding, but what kind of carrier are you using? What is your water quality like and how does that impact your foliar fertilizer? Oftentimes when we talk about water and, and we visit with other farmers, they're like, well, do you mean five gallons an acre, 10 gallons an acre? No, what is your water source? And this could be well water, it could be rural water, it could be city water. There's a lot of different places that you could get this water from. The question that I have though is, have you tested the water? And if so, what did you learn? When you look at water quality, like on our own farm, for example, comparing well water to rural water, there's a huge difference and we need to manage that accordingly. Okay, here are the three main things that we're really after. Number one is water pH. Number two, hard water ions, and number three, chlorine. Let me just start with the pH. With a lot of the foliar fertilizers, we have found that if we get the pH too high, we don't seem to get the same intake into that plant. In other words, I'd really like to see that water pH down in the five, six, six and a half kind of range. Sometimes, well, really, quite frankly, most of the time we find in our region of the country, in the Midwestern United States, the water pH is high just coming out of the well. Seven, seven and a half, maybe more. So water pH is number one. Well, when you look at the water quality, the other thing, as Brian already mentioned, is hardness of the water and what other nutrients are in there. For example, calcium, magnesium, and iron. These are things in our well water and in many samples that we've looked at from across the country. We see a lot of those nutrients out there. And those nutrients have strong positive charges that could impact the chemistry that you're applying it with. Oftentimes that calcium, magnesium, iron, those hard water ions can bind up things like glyphosate, for example, and there's been a lot of focus on making chemistry work. The same thing can happen as you're trying to foliar apply fertilizers. You can have a chemical reaction happening in your tank, not a dangerous chemical reaction, but one in where the nutrients you're trying to apply could get tied up by those hard water ions. Okay, the third thing is chlorine. Now, the number one factor with the chlorine is it raises the pH. Yes, the chlorine and treated water, when you have that, you're typically gonna see fewer hard water ions, but when you have a much higher pH, that is a big problem. For chlorinated water in our area, we typically see eight and a half pH, sometimes even nine pH, so that's a real problem. The other thing is the chlorine will kill off any beneficial microbes that you are trying to spray at the same time. So quite commonly now, we will see people putting foliar fertilizer out along with plant growth hormones and some beneficial microbiology. So you may call that biologicals, naturals, whatever it is. But many times those are all getting applied in that tank. Well, the chlorine's going to kill those beneficial microbes and the chlorine's going to raise the pH. So we want to neutralize that or not use water that has chlorine in it. So there are many different solutions to these problems that we're outlining here, but here's what we would suggest you look at. Products that you could add to your spray tank that would tie up the hard water ions and tie up that chlorine, moving them into forms that we can actually spray out onto our field. Obviously you could use some sort of filtration system and completely take those things out. The challenge with that is as farmers, we're using a lot of volume of water. Just imagine if you're spraying 1,000 acres at 10 gallons of water per acre, well, that's 10,000 gallons of water. If you're going to run through a reverse osmosis system or something like that, it's a lot of volume and you'd need a big expensive system to do that. However, if you could just add something, especially at low rates to your spray tank, to tie up those unwanted things and you could spray them out without having a whole bunch of waste that you have to discharge somewhere, that's a very beneficial system and something that could work well for your farm. Okay, so let's start with neutralizing the hard water ions. There are many different products out there that can do this. The one we're using on our farm is called Water Right, and it only costs a few cents per acre. So we're not talking about a lot of money. In addition to neutralizing calcium, magnesium, iron, and copper, what it will also do is drop the pH almost immediately down around five and a half or six. So that is ideal, that solves two of our problems. The other problem is the chlorine that you may have in your water. Now, if you have that, there's another product we've been using 
called BioPrep. That only costs maybe two, three, four cents per acre. It's almost nothing, but what it does is it turns the chlorine into chloride. So all of a sudden, it's a beneficial nutrient that you're putting out there, and it's not going to kill any beneficial microbes that you may be spraying as well. There are a couple of products we get a lot of questions about, ammonium sulfate and citric acid, where farmers have been using relatively low rates of those two products to try to lower water pH. What we've seen is in many of the commercial water sources like rural water or municipal water, they've got some products already in the water to help buffer things. So as you make additives to them, they just buffer those additives and take some of the impact of those products away. Like ammonium sulfate, for example, many of the tests that we've run show that we can lower water pH, but that it eventually comes back up. It's not a lasting change. With citric acid, one of the problems that we've seen is farmers are using various rates and trying to figure out exactly how much to use. Well, we could lower that water pH way too far, and that could create a detrimental situation with the products that you're trying to spray. So they're a little bit more difficult to utilize and oftentimes less predictable. So before you go doing some foliar feeding on your farm, we really encourage you test your water. Look for chlorine, look for hard water ions, including calcium, magnesium, iron, and copper. And then also take a look at what the pH is. Ideally, we would like to have no chlorine in there, or at least in the chloride form. We'd like to have very few hard water ions, and we'd like that water pH to be somewhere in the five and a half to six and a half range for best results with a lot of the foliar fertilizers that we've seen on the market today. Yes, there are a few steps to doing this correctly if you want your foliar fertilizer to work. There are also a few steps that we'd like to see you take if you want to control our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 